Welcome back to CivilNet. I'm your host, Patrick Elliott, uh, reporting from WCIT. I'm joined today by Professor Greg Chirikjian from uh, University of Delaware, a professor of, um, of mechanical engineering. Um, so, Professor, tell us, uh, based on what you're seeing here in Armenia, how do you see Armenia developing in the fields of science and robotics? And how do you see that contributing to the economy and the defense of this country? So I think that Armenia has a long tradition of strong mathematics and the fundamentals, and that's something to build on. Um, I've so far seen two talks today. Uh, other than that, I haven't gone to the Polytechnic or uh, Yerevan State or American University of Armenia, but uh, my understanding is that these are very strong schools, uh, and that's something to build on. Perhaps sending students abroad for training and coming back could be a way that I've seen other countries use to develop. So you're seeing that a specific program to send students to get their experience and come back to uh, yeah. contribute to the development of the country? Yeah, so I spent five years as the head of the mechanical engineering department at the National University of Singapore. And in Singapore, they send many of their best students abroad to do PhDs or postdoctoral studies, and then they lure them back. And how, how would they lure, what are some of the incentives that they use to lure them back? Uh, well, they have nice positions, nice startup, uh, nice laboratories, nice startup resources. Um, but uh, the, the experience that they gain by studying abroad is, uh, is very helpful. That's interesting because there, uh, there was a similarish program uh, as far as I remember a couple years ago. But the problem was exactly that, is that the majority just didn't come back, mm. right? So it's, it's interesting that Singapore has set itself up that it's attractive to bring people back. Yeah, and it's a small country. I mean, the number of Singapore citizens is similar to the number in Armenia. And uh, maybe they have resources to you know, make it attractive to, to bring people back, which, which helps. It's an interesting analog for Armenia. I mean, it's. 100 years ago was essentially a fishing village as part of Malaysia, and mm -hmm. it developed uh, the way that it did. And of course, there's various geographical reasons, but it's not, that's not only the reason, right? Any other island nearby could have also become a global hub, and it didn't, right? Mm. But Singapore did. It's interesting to look at Armenia in the position that we're in today. Um, so how do you see the diaspora, I mean, even such as yourself, playing a larger role in helping to stimulate that growth so that one day we can become the Singapore of, uh, of the region? The role of the diaspora, well, uh, in this model that I mentioned with the, you know, if, if Armenians come and study abroad, then uh, approaching diaspora like myself to do their studies would be a way. So do you see some kind of mentorship program that would uh, kind of work with, dias with, uh, with Armenian students coupled with Armenians in the diaspora, established diaspora, I mean. Yeah, so, I mean, one reason I'm here, actually, is because in the past, most of my students have come from China. That's not, uh, and, uh, that's not really an option anymore uh, for various uh, geopolitical reasons. Uh, and so people like myself who welcome talented and well-trained students to come study with us. And then if they want to come back, that's a pathway. And what advice would you give to uh, Armenian institutions in order to become and remain globally competitive? Uh, strong mathematics, strong English language skills, um, and uh, a willingness to learn new things, uh, sort of uh, out of the box thinking is important. Professor Chirik John, thanks again for joining us. Thank you, my pleasure. Thanks again for watching CivilNet.